Good afternoon, my friends. It is again a deep pleasure for me to be able to step in and to have a few moments to sh speak with you and to share some thoughts with you. It is a uh, busy time over in our dimension because there is so much happening in your dimension, so many changes that is happening on your frequency and in your uh, energetic fields. There is a constant uh, flux going on uh, so that we are constantly analyzing how and best to uh, bring information to you and what, what to share with you as, as the uh, situation unfolds. Uh, there is no um, crystal ball, if you want to use that term. We cannot precisely say what is exactly going to happen in the future, in your future, because there are so many variables and there are so many um, things that uh, if A happens before B, that'll be different than if B happens before A. And we cannot determine that because a lot of it has to do with free will of the individuals on the planet. And a lot of it has to do with the changing frequencies that are making things different than they had been. Even as was discussed before in the beginning of your service, the mediumship is changing in, in certain aspects because the frequencies are different. The mediums do not have a quite as uh, wide a, a gap to bridge to get into the world of spirit to connect with us so that we can speak. So there are constant changes that are happening and we want you to know that we are constantly analyzing and determining uh, what is going on and how best to provide information and guidance for you in the days to come and the years to come. As of now, we are pleased that so many of you are taking these practices that you are learning here and putting them into, uh, into use on a, if not daily basis, at least a regular basis, uh, because as we have been trying to in encourage you to do, uh, the more that you use, the more that you connect with the world of spirit, the more that you sit as the power of spirit in the in the crystalline energy, you are um, fortifying, if you want to use that word, the connection between you and the world of spirit. And we will be able to impress our thoughts upon you to help you and guide you in the future, just as has been done for centuries in your time. So it is with great excitement that we are watching all of you unfold to on uh, different speeds and different potentials, uh, not again to be uh, come public mediums, but to be connected with the world of spirit and to become the uh, lighthouse for other people who will in time be interested in learning more about how the world of spirit works, how, how to communicate with divine beings as they come to realize that this is the path to, to follow. So with that being said, we will turn this over to you and to their questions, and we hope to be able to provide sufficient answers for your questions. Thank you, Carl and friends for being here. We really appreciate it. And the first question is from Susan Yu. We have been told that the dark energies here on earth want to poison the masses through poisoning the food and water. Can you advise us on what is okay to eat and drink? Also, they are creating food shortages. How long will this go on so we know what to prepare for? Thank you. The answer to the question is one which many people cannot really follow. The best solution, the best answer is for you to go out and grow your own food so you know what, what is in it. But that is not a practical thing for most people, but they do not have the ability to do that or even the knowledge to do that. We would suggest that as much as possible, 
you um, refrain from the highly processed foods that are available to you and that you get the more simple foods, the more natural foods, that even if you have to wash them thoroughly to uh, get to um, remove any kind of pesticides or things that it grew up in, at least you know it wasn't tampered with further than with the processed foods. If at all possible, we, uh, we it is best for you to do your own baking if you can. Again, that's not practical for many, many people, but there's degrees in, in, in this answer. And so the best thing, the thing that most people can do is to buy food and it's simple food, food, vegetables, uh, meats, and things that you know have not been gone through a processing mill. Mm -hmm. And that therefore limit as much as you can of the processed foods and eat the more natural foods. That's one way to deal with this. The food shortages that are, you speak of is a problem. And again, as I was said before, timelines are very difficult, but it would be prudent for you to have at least uh, a, a year's worth of provisions, if possible, to fall back on. It is wise to stock up and have food on hand and water on hand. As so many parts of the country are, are having, having difficulties with rain right now and water, some, some areas are having drought conditions. So we ask that you try to consider that as much as possible and do what you can. You can, there are very few people who are equipped to be totally self-sufficient, grow their own food, provide their own water and be, know what they are, that they are responsible for what goes into their body. Your society has long left that kind of situation where that was more commonplace. So we ask you to do what you can and as much as you can. Do you understand? Thank you. Our next question is from Fenton. I belong to a group channeled by Pepper Lewis. She channels the sentience Gaia. Could you please elaborate on the word sentience as it refers to the planet earth do other planets in our solar system or in other universes also have sentience and do they function in the same way thank you Before I answer your question, I am going to refer back to your own physical bodies. Your body is a living organism. It is carrying out multiple tasks that as you go about your day, you're not even aware of. You are not aware of the blood going around in your body. You are not aware of uh, the uh, chemicals that are happening, the chemical exchange, the chemical breakdowns. As you eat your food, it goes into your body, it breaks down, it kind of goes. You don't know how that works per se. Yes, you might have studied a little bit in school, but you don't really understand it. And if I were to ask you right now, what is going on with the lunch you had, you could not tell me. So what I am referring to is this whole mechanism of life, of living, mm -hmm. is your sentience, and you are not aware of it. It's almost like a, um, 
an organization that's running on its own and it's doing its own thing and it's keeping everything going the way it's supposed to go. And that is what sentience is. Yes, the earth is a living being and it has sentience. It is a certain system that keeps the energy flowing, that keeps everything aligned, that tries to prevent earthquakes and, and as much as it can until the pressure and things are, you get beyond and it has to give way. It is a certain consciousness, a certain knowingness that is there. And the earth has this sentience. The medium that you are referring to taps into that energy and receives information about the earth in that way. Other planets also have sentience. Most living things have sentience. And this is why a medium can go into animal communication. Yes, it's partially mental telepathy, because all mediumship is a bit of telepathy, but it's also the energy of that that animal is involved and that connecting to that energy the medium does it in a subconscious way where that the sentience of the medium attaches to the sentience of the animal and therefore communication can be passed from one to the other this is what we're called referring to as the word sentience it's a sense just like it, part of that word has clear sentience in it, the feeling, a uh, clear feeling, the knowing. So the knowingness in the sentience keeps that organism, whether it's the planet or an animal or your own physical body, going to the best of its ability until something goes out of kilter too much and the uh, and you pass into the world of spirit because the sentience can't keep things working any longer. Uh, that, that is mostly how people pass into the world of spirit. They, things break down to the point that it can no longer function. It can no longer exist in the physical world. And the sentience dissipates for that particular person. But the spiritual energy, the soul, goes on into the world of spirit. Do you understand? Thank you. The next question is from Carol C. There are some groups of people who are knowledgeable about the global currency reset, and they feel it will happen at any moment. They say <clears throat> that for those who hold foreign currencies, when you go for your appointment at the redemption centers, you will have to walk through a scanning device similar to what airports use, that device will download information to your brain. Is this true? And is this of benefit to people or is it harmful? Thank you. Um, we say to you, Prepare yourself so you can avoid that whole situation. That scanner is not healthy for you. It will not do anything good for you. It is a way for them to impregnate you with certain energies. They are working on doing this through many ways. One is through the vaccines that you are aware of. And this is another technology that they have come up with. And they feel that since everyone is going to have to deal with the money situation, that they will have to uh, submit to this scan. We ask you to try to avoid it if you can, because it is not anything that will benefit you. Thank you. The next question is from Laura M. Reading about the Great World Reset 2030 and all the negative aspects that happened so far this year, like fires at food processing plants. Will this plan come to fruition or will it be stopped before the point of no return? Is there hope for humanity? 
And also, Edgar Casey twice mentions that, quote, out of Russia will come the hope of the world, unquote. Does this refer to what is happening currently with Russia and Ukraine? Thank you. As we stated before, giving dates is very difficult. We can tell you that there are the negative plans that you have <coughs> mentioned. They are there, they are being put into place. What these planners do not realize is that there is a whole army of people in the light who know of what's happening and who have their own plan to stop what, what they have planned from happening. The answer to your question is no, there is hope out there and that this will not go through. We are working on watching what is happening. And you must also understand that there are many, 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 many beings on other planets who are also watching and waiting in the wings for the right time to step on stage and make their presence known. When that happens, the people in the dark will be terrified, if you want to use that word, word because they are going to understand that there is no way they can overpower and outmaneuver these higher beings. And they will come to realize that they will be going down in defeat. No one can give you a time frame of when this will happen. But I assure you, we assure you that it will. So what we ask you to do is to live in the light, to be an example of what a person who lives a spiritual life is to all around you, to the best of your ability, and know that the cavalry will be coming in at some point and the day will be saved. That has been predicted for centuries, since biblical times. Nothing will alter that prophecy. It will come to be. Know it. Don't have faith in it. Don't believe it. Know that eventually light will win over dark. And you will witness that in some day. Do you understand? Thank you. The next question is from Lee G. If I am not mistaken, when one passes on, our new being is transported on a journey that we're taken on, leading to greater and greater heights of enlightened, peaceful awareness. Am I right about what I just described? Is life in our new form after physical death necessarily always peaceful? Moreover, I'm open to being corrected and educated regarding what life is like after the demise of our physical selves. Thank you. The answer to your question is, there are many answers to that question. So we'll start by talking about specific examples. When a person who has lived a criminal life in prison passes on to the world of spirit, they go into a dimension that is not all that different than their physical selves where physical life was, and they will be confronted to look at their life and to uh, analyze it and to start to realize that they weren't a very good person in, the, in, the, in this world to other people. And that that is really what is really important. And so therefore they are gonna go through a period of not so nice time, go, working through those feelings and working through that, that knowledge base 
until they can refine themselves and re and become a little bit more spiritual to go up the next step in the ladder to another spiritual realm, which is a little bit more spiritual enlightened, and therefore, and continue the process. So it is not a um, peaches and cream type of, of existence that they have. It is quite, quite full of turmoil and self-analyzation and breastfeeding and so forth until they can work themselves into a, uh, into a knowledge and a spiritual base where they're no longer in that particular vibration. If you're a person who, who is an average person, who's lived an average life, who has done good things and has done bad things, and you know, as most people do in this life, when they, when they go into the spirit world, they too have to confront themselves as to what, they, it's, what they've done. It's called the life review. They live through everything that they've done. They experience it from their own point of view and from the recipient's point of view. And they start to realize how they did. It's kind of like a grand test. For most people, this isn't a very pleasant process, but it isn't horrific as it was for the criminal. It is unpleasant and maybe disappointing because you have to confront your own foibles and, and your own mistakes and recognize it and own up to it. And eventually you go beyond that and you can start to uh, live your existence uh, a little bit clearer of that. You have other people who lived a, an exemplary life who, who did very little harm to people, who when they go into the spirit world will have a much easier time uh, and, and existence uh, because they, when they go through their life review, it isn't such a traumatic event. In fact, some of it might bring them quite a bit of joy that they lived up to their expectations in order to live such a good life. So again, it depends there's no one answer to what you are asking. What I can tell you for everyone is that once this process of, of uh, self-evaluation is done and it's worked out, there is a period of time where you get to, uh, you get, I'll call it time off. It's not really time off. I'm, needing, I'm lacking words here. You live the life there of what of your own choosing of what you want to do if you were an artist you may end up doing a lot of painting if you're a singer you may be singing if you're a medium you may be ho helping people in this dimension of communicating with with people in the physical world and giving them guidance it all depends on what your own goals are in in your in your own desires of what you want to do with your time in the world of spirit there comes a time though, that you have a calling within your own soul, within your own being, to realize that you, you have kind of reached the end of what you can do in the world of spirit. And in order to advance further, you have to reincarnate back into the physical world and test yourself again. <clears throat> it is that point that you, you meet with certain people, you, set, you kind of plan an agenda those of you who are teaching school understand that you, when you go to teach a lesson, you have a lesson plan. You have you have mapped out how the how the lesson's going to go. You have figured it all out ahead of time. You kind of write a lesson plan for your upcoming life. What you want to accomplish, what you want to test, whether you see if you can do this right this time instead of getting it wrong, and so forth. And in order to to do that. You uh, make contracts to meet certain people, which will facilitate these experiences to test that out to see if it works. When everything's in place and a vehicle, uh, a new baby's his body is ready to be uh, have a soul come in, then then you uh, you go in and you attach your soul to that physical body and you have a physical life, and the process starts again. I hope you've uh, answered your question. Thank you. Hey, I'd like to go back to Laura's question. I think we missed the second part of it. It was Edgar Casey twice mentions that out of Russia will come the hope of the world. 
Does this refer to what is happening currently with Russia and Ukraine? <clears throat> no, it doesn't refer to that. It re refers to there's going to be a discovery that will be made in that in that region of the world, which will have far reaching uh, implications for the entire planet. The discovery will be made there, but the process will be used worldwide. Okay, thank you. Um, next question is from Carol C. The planet Nibiru is coming back after its 3,600 year elliptical orbit. Can you comment on how this will affect us and if we will see Enki, Enlil, and their people come back, or have they always been here and never left? Thank you. Your planet, as we have talked about, is in a vibratory modulation. It is, the frequencies are changing. The planet that you speak about, and when it comes into a certain aspect or a certain point in its orbit, will have a powerful effect upon the frequency of your Earth plane. A, you may want to think of it as this planet is going to become like an amplifier, which will enhance the frequency and the changes that are uh, about to occur. So the yes, there will be an effect to this planet coming close by once again, and the effect will be a very positive one. The uh, entities that you had referred to, uh, they they are entities, my friend, who are not as limited as you are thinking of them. For they can be on their planet and they can also be here in a matter of a millisecond, they can go back from one to the other. So yes, they have been here and most people have not been aware of them. And yes, they have been on their planet for a good part of the time too. Uh, it's very much, if you want to think about it, uh, what you have been told so many times by the people in the spirit world, they are just a thought away. Well, what does that mean? That means that their being is on a frequency that's somewhere else, and that within a millisecond, within a second, within two seconds, because you put a thought out about them, they can be in your presence or in your uh, vicinity or, or, or frequency, uh, or it's not a physical thing that nevertheless there's a mental uh, energy connection, uh, mental energy connection between you and that person. So in a sense, the entities you are talking about can be in both places. Uh, if they are advanced enough, they can be in both places at the same time. But most of the time they don't bother with that. They go from one to the other because they can travel between the two in a matter of a second. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, yes. And since we have some time, a um, couple more questions that Carol C has. So right now, the vaccines are being given to children under five years old. So the dark side seems to be moving ahead with their depopulation agenda with no hindrance. And uh, it's just heartbreaking that these children are being vaccinated. Um, we need Trump to speak out against these vaccines. Do you see that occurring in any time soon? Thank you.
the man that you are referring to in a sense has his hands shackled because he cannot speak out against that because if he were to do so, he would be committing political suicide. No one would be, well, he would not be able to become your leader again to lead you out of this mess. So he realizes that he cannot talk on that subject because it would cause his political demise. It is unfortunate. There are people who are trying their best. And the people I'm talking about do not have physical bodies. They are trying their best to uh, stop these um, young children from receiving these vaccines. They are trying to have people speak up uh, and say to the politicians, these children aren't endangered with, with the disease. Why, is they, why are they being vaccinated? There are people in the world who understand, as you do, the dangers of the vaccines, and there's people who have their heads in the sand. Without being callous, we have to remind you that life as a human being is one of choices. You had the choice of choosing your parents and your family situation when you incarnated into the world. You had a choice to accept the religious teachings of your family. You had the choice to reject them at some point in your life, perhaps. You became dissatisfied and you reject them. It was a choice. You have a choice whether to be politically aware or not aware. So in a sense, what we are saying is that there is no right or wrong and there is no judgment. So the fact is that people have come to this planet to, for the experience. Some of them people have, will have the experience because they chose it to have their head in the sands and there may be consequences for their ignorance down the low road. But that was the choice they made. And that was the, what they kind of decided to live through when they came into the world. So yes, from a certain point of view, this is a tragedy and it's horrible and we gotta do everything to change it. But on the other point, in the other perspective, then you're not allowing the free will of the individual to experience what they may have contracted to experience. That argument doesn't always sit well. Even though there's validity to it, it's sometimes a hard pill to swallow. But we ask you to start to consider that. Not that it should say, well, then everybody's up, it's up to their own. That's not to say not to continue to speak out and do what you need to do. But you have to be able to hold your point of view, promote it without the expectation of someone having to follow it. Do you understand that? Yes. So it, it's not, I'm just trying to bring it into balance the sense that we feel of the urgency and the disappointment. And yes, it's true. And we're not negating that. But that, but you got to remember the free will. Live your truth, speak your truth, promote your truth, do everything you can to do what you believe in without expectations. 
Okay, and that will that will allow you to live your your truth. And those who choose to follow your teachings and what you promote will follow and be grateful. But you cannot invest in the ones who who have their head in the sand. Thank I, you. Hope, I hope you understand what we're trying to tell you. I do. It's just a little difficult when it comes to very young children. Yes. And, yeah. So yes. we acknowledge that. However, we remind you that some very young children decide that they want to go through a cancer experience and have that. And that's very difficult too. So we are just trying to make you again aware of the choices that people make, which is their right to do for their experience that they contract to do. Okay. And perhaps some of these children have contracted for this. Yeah. Perhaps you're not victims. And again, we are not discouraging your what you're what you're saying or or trying to downplay it at all. I understand. Thank you. So next question is from Lou Vera. Is monkeypox man-made and is it a plot to annihilate homosexuals? Unfortunately, the answer to both questions is yes. You must understand that one of the biggest threats to the darkness happens to be people who are homosexual because they are uh, they are androgynous. When God created man, excuse, well, yes, I will say it because it's written in the Bible that way, God created man, he created Adam, and Adam was androgynous. He was both male and female, and it, it says that humankind was created by God, both male and female, both male and female. In order to have a divine experience, you need to have both energies. The homosexuals, the, the, the male souls residing in, excuse me, the female souls residing in male bodies are, uh, are in a sense, have more androgyny than a male person having a male soul or a female person having a female soul. This androgyny allows them to be in communication with the world of spirit on a lot easier basis. It allows them to have be in this more creative sphere uh, to create things uh, on, on many different levels uh, because they have both energies. It was what humankind was intentionally supposed to be androgynous. When you are working on uh, unifying with the uh, crystalline energy, the crystalline energy, a God energy is androgynous. It is both male and female. And therefore, androgyny is really the end goal of, of, of human uh, ev evolution, is to be both male and female. We're not saying physically, we're talking energetically. So therefore, the dark side has always had trouble with the androgynous persons, whether they're homosexual, whether they just dress in the other uh, gender's clothing, uh, however they express it, because there are many expressions for androgyny. And therefore, it is a threat because it, it will undermine their plans of domination. And that is why they have cre created this disease. This is why they had created the disease of AIDS back in the 80s. It was planned. Centuries ago, when in the 1500s, in that time frame. There was a large persecution of people who were mediumistic, who they called witches. At that time, they also persecuted many homosexuals. 
And when I say persecuted, most of them were executed in very horrific manners. So it, it, this is not a new story. It is a story that goes way back into the biblical times when all these laws were deliberately written into the Bible by the editors of the Bible. It wasn't a God who said that homosexuality was terrible. It was the people who wrote the Bible who said God said it because that allowed them to control it. That allowed them to um, keep the, uh, the Hebrew people from practicing mediumship because they, their religion was exactly the same as, the, as their neighbors, the Canaanites. The Canaanites worshiped a goddess. The goddess had, had, uh, had mediums who were, who were homosexual, who, who, provided, uh, who provided a way of communication with, with, with the goddess through sexual means. And they, they understood that. And it was a very, very powerful and they were afraid that all the Hebrews would go to the Canaanite church and not theirs. And therefore they said homosexuality was horrible and God hated it. And it was abomination. They wrote that into the book and it ha has had dire consequences throughout history. If you go into the um, indigenous people, you will discover that they have many um, androgynous people who were the shamans, who were the mediums, who were the healers, who were the people who were in communication with, with the spirit world for the people who were honored and revered, not hated. This was all a, a power trip, a control trip by certain religious leaders that has affected us for thousands of years. Do you understand? Thank you. And um, one final question from Carol C. NASA says that there is a huge asteroid that may impact Earth in this year, 2022. I've seen predictions of various dates. What can you tell us about this? And is it truly dangerous for the Earth? There is a potential for a asteroid to come in contact with the Earth even to collide within it. But we are, though from what we see at this point in time, that is very highly unlikely because your scientists are aware of it and <clears throat> your people have the satellites and the missiles in order to um, uh, aim at it and make it bl blow up into much, much, much smaller pieces. So one that does make contact with the earth, it will not have the destructive power that uh, it would have had if it went had happened unnoticed. You understand? Yes, thank you. Does anyone else have a question? You can type it in the chat. Okay, I think that's it. I thank you, Carl and friends so much. We really appreciate all that you do for us. Thank you. Again, it is, our, it is our joy and happiness to be here, to be able to uh, provide comfort, to be able to provide solace, because in the times that you are living in, it is very, um, uh, it makes you nervous, it makes you concerned. And the fact that you have an access to, to some answers, to, we hope that will, come, will make you a little bit more at peace. And for that, we are grateful to be able to serve you in this fashion. And with that, we will leave, we will leave at this point with our blessings and ask you to continue to, uh, to work with the crystalline energy and to live your life the best you can as a spiritual being in a physical world. My blessings to you.